What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new HDRI backdrop feature in Twinmotion 2022.2 and how you can use it to make more realistic lighting and renders inside of Twinmotion. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just a reminder that my Twin Motion rendering course is currently in early access, meaning that you can get access to the course for 50% off on this early version. So um, if that's something you're interested in, you've been looking for some more in-depth Twin Motion training. Um, this is definitely a good place to go. Um, we get into all the basics of working with Twin Motion. Then we talk about doing some uh, doing some final renderings as well. So if you're looking for some more information as well as a place where you can actually go to ask questions and not get stuck working on your renderings, the Twin Motion Essentials course could be a good fit for you. I'll link to that in the notes down below. Now, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the HDRI environments that have been added in Twin Motion. Remember that we've already had the ability to bring in HDRI environments like this, right? So you can drag this in, and what it's going to do is it's going to basically apply this HDRI to your sky and to your environment so that it lights your scene. And so remember that this is a great way to get really realistic lighting as well as a really realistic backdrop like this in your scene. However, one thing about doing it this way is you don't necessarily have a ton of control over um, your actual lighting itself, right? You have like the intensity and then if the HDRI affects the lighting, but if you wanted to like move it up and down or something like that, you don't really have the ability to do that. However, in the newest version of Twin Motion, version 2022.2, they've added the ability to use a backdrop HDRI. And so if you go into your lighting settings, click right here, and select backdrop HDRI, notice what that's going to do is that's going to give you a different kind of HDRI in your scene. And so notice how if you fly out like this, that this looks a little bit different, right? So basically what it's done is it's created a dome centered on this central location right here, and it's applied that HDRI image to that dome. And so there's a lot of benefits of doing it this way. So first off, let's fly back into our scene real quick, and we're gonna jump into our backdrop environment under more. Notice how we can adjust the height offset, meaning you can move this HDR envir HDRI environment up or down. And so one cool thing about this is this means that you don't necessarily need a ground plane. So like for example, I'm gonna to toggle this ground plane off. Well, notice how with this HDR environment, it kind of has a ground associated with it right? So um, basically this dome also has a ground that receives shadows like this. And so when you move this, you're actually getting a ground plane below your object. So you could use your HDRI environment as your ground like this. Now, in this case, this isn't necessarily a great example. So let's take a look at some of our other examples. So we're going to go back into our HDRI environments. We'll remember that not only do we have skies now, there's also other categories of environments that we can use. So we'll take a look at the studio in a second, but for now let's look at the outdoor environments. So if you look at the outdoor environments by clicking on them right here, and so what you've got is you've got environments like this one right here that you can take and you can download and then you can bring them in and drag them on top of this environment right here in order to replace it. All right, so now this is downloaded. I can drag this onto my dome down below. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna reapply this new HDRI image to this dome right here. All right, so notice how when we first bring this in, it's a little bit small, right? So what we wanna do, and this is something that you can only do with these backdrop HDRIs, so we wanna adjust the size out like this. So notice how when we adjust the size out like this, it basically stretches out the image so that it's uh, further away from your object right here. And what I wanna do in this situation is I also wanna to toggle my floor back on, right? Usually I'm gonna recommend that you're gonna use your starting ground um, anyway, or some kind of ground under your objects, just cause it gives you a little more control over the textures and other things like that. But we can take this and we can move it down so that it's now behind the starting ground right here. So you can adjust the size of that object like this. And then you can also adjust the rotation of the object like this. And so not only can you adjust the size, which is gonna make this go further or closer to your object, but you can also adjust the projection offset, which is gonna adjust how high up or how low down this goes um, from your flat plane right here. 
So if we drag that down, then notice how this is gonna be pretty close to level right here. So again, what this does is this just gives us a little bit more control over what's in our scene than before. And again, the height offset is going to allow you to move this up or down. So you can use this to adjust how high up in your scene this is like this. And so one thing to note about that is you can adjust where this dome is centered. So like, so let's say for example, I was to move my mouse or my uh, my viewport over here, you can click on the button to center at camera. And what that's going to do is that's gonna center the dome on your current camera location. So you can use this in order to move the dome, but then the other thing you could do is you could also reset it by clicking on the reset button right here. That's going to reset that so that it's centered on the, uh, so that it's centered on the central point of your scene in twin motion. All right, so one other place where this is extremely valuable is let's say that we wanted to change the lighting of this scene so that it has a backdrop HDRI, but in this case, we're gonna use one of the studio lighting setups that comes with Twin Motion. All right, so right now this is uh, like a this is like a field, but if you go into HDR environments and select the option for studio, what these are is these are actual lighting setups that basically simulate a lighting studio in the real world. And so if you mouse over these, you can see kind of what the reflections are gonna look like. I'm gonna go ahead and use this studio right here, but I'm just gonna drag it on this backdrop HDRI right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us significantly better light in our scene. And in this case, we can bring this down and we'll probably turn our starting ground off on this one. We'll go ahead and bring this down a little bit. And we can adjust our intensity right here as well as our rotation. Notice how the lighting in here is really good and so it's reflecting really well off of our objects. This can be especially helpful if we toggle into path trace mode to path trace our object right here. So notice how that lighting looks really good. Now, one feature I would like to see that I'm not currently seeing is I'd like to see the ability to use the lighting from this object without actually showing the object itself because the darks and the lights in here just don't really look very good. And as far as I know, we don't currently have the ability to do any kind of render elements or anything like that to remove these. Now, what you could do is you could take this to Photoshop and remove the background that way, but it would be nice to have a way to just really easily do that where we could use the lighting in here, which is really good, but then not have it in the background. So I'm hoping that's gonna be added in the future. And so actually, if you go into the Twin Motion public roadmap under the in progress, they do have HDRI background compositing. Um, so basically they're building, so in progress is something where they're building the ability to composite a background image separate from the scene environment and lighting in here. So this does seem like something they're working on. There's also something in here in the under consideration for render passes, which I would really like to see. That's where you would get like the material ID and the sky mask and other things like that. So one of them's in progress, the other one's in consideration. So if this is something you'd like to see, make sure that you go in here and vote for it right here. This gives you the ability to um, not only vote for it, but also type in why. Um, any context you provide is going to be helpful there. So make sure you put in a why when you do this. This is going to help us let Twin Motion know that it's an important feature. All right, so if you're interested in learning how to use Twin Motion, remember that my course is in early access for the next uh, 10 days. So make sure you click on that link in the notes down below if you're interested in that. Uh, let me know what you think about this feature as well. Personally, I really like it for studio lighting and that kind of thing, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.